right out of the box, it has everything you need for flux core welding. Everything for MIG welding minus your regulator, gas, and solid core wire. It has a stinger, but don't forget the rods. Comes with a manual TIG torch and no tungsten, so don't forget that. And this does need 100% argon. They do throw in a cheap little chipping hammer, some consumables, and an okay manual. Hey, it is in color. Pick up the MiG-270 and yes, you can score some sweet glasses like that. I actually did use these for my plasma cutting and they seem to work out pretty good. Most machines are coming as dual voltage, which is nice. Uh, this one has the standard 110 plug with the 220 adapter. Let's throw in some flux core wire and get rolling. I started out with flux core and I tested it with the wire that it came with, which was 1.0, which is slightly above 0.035. So it's some pretty thick flux core wire. Right here, you got two LEDs. One of them is a yellow for OC. Well, it says OC. I'm assuming that is for overcurrent and then one for the power. You'll switch between your different processes right here. The last position is your MIG or flux core. This control knob does nothing because that is for your stick and your lift. You have the burn back. It does not correlate with any of the displays. Um, burn back, I'll usually just keep it right in the middle. Then you've got your voltage right here, the middle knob. That goes from 15 up to 24. And then your wire speed. Um, uh, correlates with that digital display and that goes from 46 up to 270. The middle red button is just for a cold wire feed. Very easy to switch over to MIG, just don't forget to switch your polarity leads and obviously hook up gas, not included. The only issue that I had with the MIG welding was my fault. I only had 0.025 wire, so pretty thin. It did the eighth inch just fine, uh, but this quarter inch, I did the opposite side from the flux core. Um, quarter inch, it's way too thick for that size of uh, wire, but I just kept going just because. And you know, it didn't turn out too bad. Pretty sure it's not a full penetration weld, but that doesn't matter. Just wanted to throw it down on that anyway. And then I did end up doing another fillet weld with some eighth inch material, kind of fine tuned the settings a bit more. And by the end, turned out just great.
got MMA up on top and to control the current, it's this digital display and the knob is over here. It goes from 35 up to 220. Next up is the stick welding. I'm using the 332nd inch rod of 7018 and it threw down very nicely. No complaints about the stick welding. The middle position is for your uh, TIG. It says lift TIG. We'll really see if that's the case. And likewise with the stick, it goes from 35 up to 220 amps. Next, the TIG welding. The only thing it didn't come with, well, other than gas, was tungsten. So don't forget that. Pick up some tungsten if you're gonna get this set up. Uh, short of that, well, I'm not that great at TIG welding, but I did end up throwing down a couple beads, messed around a bit. The only thing I noticed was this did seem like a strike start not a lift and that's just because when i first uh put it to the workpiece and lifted up it was just stuck to it so i would lean more towards that it is a strike start and even with that for my tig standards it threw down some pretty good beads Warranty, okay, well it is through Amazon so you do get at least 30 days out of it. There were comments that said there was a one year, 30 day, or 90 day, and another said no warranty. Just factor that in with your pros and cons and know there may or may not be a warranty past 30 days. And that's all I got for this one. I'm Mechmaster, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.